Argov works on a philosophy that the world's most complex challenges can be resolved through the simplest means. A view largely shaped by his experience from living in Hanslok Ashram in New Delhi for 12 years. Today he launched the country's first electricity generating stationary bike that promises to light up thousands of homes. Modeled on a simple principle, um, the longer you pedal, the more energy you produce. The bike will be launched around March, April next year with a starting price of anywhere between 12,000 and 15,000 rupees. Just one hour of pedaling, we are told, can meet a rural household's electricity requirements for 24 hours. And that includes running lights, a small fan, and even to charge a cell phone. And now we are joined on the big picture by the man himself, Manoj Bhargav. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Bhargav, for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And electricity generating stationary bike clearly was an idea whose time had come. But tell us a little bit about this. When did you stumble upon this idea and what prompted you to take this forward, sir? Well, the idea came after we had spent a lot of money giving money away all over the place and realized that not much was changing with that. So the idea that, that we realized that there are only three things that affect everything. One is clean water, energy, you know, electricity, and uh, health. And so uh, the idea for the electric came about. There was a kind of an interesting thing. What happened is I was watching this, uh, this race car. Uh, in, in America, it's called NASCAR. They, they have races. And one man took a jack, put it under the car, and with one swing of his hand, almost flipped the car over. So I went to, so I went to our guys, our engineers, and I said, look, if this guy has so much power in one hand that he can do this, why cannot we take that? and turn it into electricity. And so, we, so that's where we started. And then and we started to, to you know, experiment with, with these things, which were pumps. And it was a total disaster. And then, and then we worked on it for a long time. And then finally, somebody came up with the idea that we would use these flywheels and alternators to do it. And then uh, all of a sudden, it worked. And then for the next six months, we tried to make it more efficient and simpler. It turned into this complicated bunch of stuff. And then we start taking away parts and say, we don't need this, we don't need this. And in the end, we ended up something which was 80% a bicycle. And then all it has beyond that is an alternator and a battery. And what it does is you pedal for an hour. And for a rural house, uh, you have electricity for 24 hours. And also, not, not only for households, but for schools, for businesses, I think that in the end, this will generate hundreds of thousands of businesses. Right, sir. In fact, the timing for this unveiling of this product is also very interesting. It comes right before the COP21 summit starts in Paris. Did you time the launch accordingly? No, actually, uh, the first I heard of it was today. So uh, I'm, we're, on, we're on our own schedule. We really don't have anything to do with uh, uh, what everybody else is doing. What we did was say, OK, we're going to unveil this film. And then from that film, I wanted to unveil the final uh, the, the bicycle in India. Um, and my, I was scheduled to arrive here from Singapore yesterday. So I got here yesterday. And today, we had all of this press. Apparently, everybody has kind of realized what this will mean to India. And so, you know, like I said, we're on our own schedule. I, I don't really know what anybody else is doing. Well, over the years, Mr. Bhargav, we've seen you dabble in many uh, interesting innovations. A while ago, you unveiled the desalination technology, which could potentially address uh, the drought troubles in California. Also, you launched the 5-hour energy drink, uh, which you call as a focused for focused drink and something that has uh, sort of earned your company over a billion dollars. So going forward, do we see more innovations and more interesting ideas coming from your side, sir? I think you'll see a bunch of stuff. Uh, Five Hour Energy is a product we made, and we sell it, and it's sort of more of a business. Uh, and it's sort of an enabler. We make actually large amounts of money from that. And then my job from then on is to say, OK, I'd like to serve the bottom half of the world, you know, in terms of those are my customers. That's who I want to serve. And so we take that and then turn it into these innovations, which these inventions, 
which will affect the bottom half. And right now you're seeing the first one, which is going to be what we call free electric. Uh, and then the, the other one that we're already there with is a, uh, something that cleans water, seawater. And then you'll still, and we're still, we've got some more things coming. Uh, we have another device for water that's not seawater, that's sort of brackish water or arsenic water or water that's polluted, but it's not. Seawater is the most difficult. And so we have other equipment that we produce for that, which will be sort of coming out with probably early next year. And then now we have a bunch of other stuff, which I'd like just as soon announce it when we're ready. Well, sir, coming back to this uh, specific product that you've unveiled today, have you been able to identify the manufacturers for this product? Because we understand that the technology will be in your hands, but the manufacturing, of course, will be done by others. We are definitely in deep talks with, uh, with a couple of them. And, uh, and, and, and again, it, this is going to be produced here. So that it's going to be manufactured here. And the infrastructure is already in place. So we're at the late stages of getting all that ironed out. We expect production to start in March. Can you also give us a sense of how many are you looking to produce in the first year? I think the first batch is going to be just a small batch, which is about 10,000. And then, and then from then, we'll see what the sort of the demand is and what the, you know, where all we can get it. And at that point, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I th the whole market is probably a hundred million of these, you know. There, there's no end to how many people want to have device that will give them free electricity. And, and, and true, sir, in fact, many would say definitely that for an innovative product like this, the scope would seem limitless. But still, I mean, you know, you have sort of put in your money and you're sort of, you know, putting that product out there. So have you done, have you been able to do any sort of survey or any kind of market analysis to sort of figure out the potential size for such a product? Well, I, I don't think you need to do huge amounts of studies for it. I mean, <laughs> pretty much everybody needs electricity. And the only way to get poor people out of poverty is if they don't have electricity, it's not going to happen. Uh, so I think it's the, uh, you know, it's 70% of India that gets electricity two, three hours a day or not at all. And so our market is that size. And that, of course, doesn't include all the little businesses that will start, or all the schools, or all these other organizations that need it, healthcare organizations. Um, so I think it's, it's not something that, uh, whether, whether the market is 50 million or 150 million, it's, right now it's irrelevant. Because we have to get to 50 million first. So you also have a very uh, sort of a personal, uh, a very interesting personal life. Like you dropped out of, uh, of Princeton because you got bored just in the first year. Then you went on after some years to live in the Hanslok ashram for what, 10 to 12 years. How was the ashram, how did the ashram experience influence your thinking when it comes to uh, sort of coming up with innovative solutions to, to some of the world's most complex and vexing issues? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, most people, you know, when they go to school, they'll go to college, then they'll get their master's and so on. My schooling was a little different. I did one year at Princeton University. And then after that, my education was that those 12 years where I learned things in a different way. And so that education definitely influenced everything because we tend to go, now I tend to go towards simple. Whereas everybody else seems to, from my perspective, go towards complicated and new. You know, I look at how can I get there in a, the most simple way possible. And so that's why the devices that we have are not put together with state-of-the-art technology, but technology that was really useful, but may have been 100 years old. And so our approach to things, because it's different, Nobody came out with the same things as we did because our approach has been completely different. A product like this uh, could also be uh, sort of potentially be very useful for the government when it's looking to move away from fossil fuel based energy. Uh, will you reach out to the government with this product? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I think the Indian government is so vast that uh, it would be foolish of us not to work with them. Uh, however, I mean, we're going to do it on our own. 
if the government helps us in any way or we can work with the government, that will be great. And if, but if it doesn't, then we'll go as fast as we can ourselves. So I'm not dependent on that, but I think you're absolutely right that it, it is, if you want to get it out there to the entire public, the government does need to be involved. Or, or they may or may not be interested, I don't know. And nobody, I mean, when they contact me, I'll let you know. Have other countries also evinced interest in a product like this, uh, uh, sir? I mean, considering especially our neighboring countries, you know, the electric situation is as dire, if not, if not worse than in India. So will, you, will we see this uh, being sort of launched in some of the other neighboring countries or even beyond that? Actually, we've got inquiries from at least 50 countries. Uh, all Southeast Asia, Africa, South America, Eastern Europe, Everywhere there's demand for this. And we, at this point, we're going to start a small plant in the United States. Because uh, the funny part is, there's huge demand in the United States, which makes no sense. But there is. Uh, and, uh, uh, and India. Those are our first two areas. And then what we're doing is, we're going to make a model plant in the US, which then every country can come in and transplant that to their own countries. And we will license them. We will help them with technology. We will help them with process and make sure that their quality stays up to speed. And that's one of the big things that I have is I don't mind if, I mean, if people are going to copy this, but I'm going to make sure they copy it well. You know, I want them to, I want them to do a good job. I don't want, uh, you know, second rate products to, uh, you know, take advantage of the poor. So essentially, sir, you're saying that you will be offering this, uh, you know, this, uh, this technology for which you have a patent free of cost? Yes, because it, look, in the end, we're not going to make any money from it. So it, it, it really doesn't matter to us. But however, if we license somebody, if he thinks, if that company thinks that I'm going to give out to another 50 companies, they're not going to make it, right? If they're going to have 50 competitors, nobody's going to make it. So I'm only going to license selectively so that they at least have a business. In other words, they have some protection that we c Otherwise, then nobody's going to make it for me. It's clearly, sir, a product uh, uh, which I would want to lay my hands on very soon. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining us here on The Big Picture and wish you all the luck with this.